Hi, my name is Beth Rippey, and um, I've been married to my sweet husband, Chase, for now. We just celebrated our 10-year anniversary this past June. Amelia is our seven-year-old. She was born in 2017, and she is just full of life and so kind. And then our second child, Rhett, he's five. He was born in 2019, and he's kind of the typical all-boy. Those of you mamas in the audience, I apologize ahead of time. Um, <laughs> my pregnancies were amazing. I have joked I could be pregnant my entire life because I love it that much. Amelia was born um, on time just 40 weeks and six days. She was eight pounds, 13 ounces. And then Rhett was born same, it was odd, 40 weeks and six days. And he was eight pounds even. Everything about their pregnancies was, was pretty easy. No complications, very, um, around, goodness, Easter of 2022, um, we got pregnant with our third baby, Everly. She um, was very plain, just like the other two were. And we were here for Easter service and our parents, um, we had intentions of planning to tell them that, it, you know, just a happy, joyous day all around. Um, Sandy and Julie were still here and we were walking out and I just felt some, like a sudden gush of blood. So I went back to the bathroom and I was hemorrhaging like profusely. And they were very, just so accommodating and sweet and helped through that whole kind of really tumultuous time. Of course, I, I knew I was miscarrying. Um, actually had a miscarriage in between our first two, Amelia and Rhett. And so I knew that that's what was going on. We followed up with our OBGYN. Um, they said I had a subchorionic hematoma attached to my placenta and that to be expecting to hemorrhage throughout the pregnancy. I was completely blown away that, what did, did they just say that? Like, did they just say I still had a baby? I, I miscarried this last weekend, that's not possible. They confirmed that I still had a viable pregnancy, that Everly was still alive and well and very strong. And um, fast forward to June, I was at home and I felt a sudden like rush. I'm a nurse at, by trade and so I went and got my pulse ox and all the things in my cupboard and my heart rate was sky high. I was, my oxygen was low and I called my husband very nonsensical, making no sense to him. Um, and I, my sweet neighbor rushed me to the emergency room. Um, on ultrasound, they had found that my water had broke and there was no amniotic fluid for Everly. And when a baby doesn't have amniotic fluid for the entire nine months, their alveoli, um, which is the it's in lung structure. That's what oxygen exchange happens. And Everly would not have the chance to develop those in utero. And so these conversations were real. They were hard with our OBGYN. And an abortion was presented at one point in time because um, I was 18 weeks and six days along when my water broke. And um, there was really no chance to give Everly a fair shot at life at that point. The other side of it was um, an extreme risk of me to hemorrhage out before I would even make it to the hospital and lose my life itself as well. Um, and I just felt God constantly telling me, she will have a testimony to tell for the ages. Just keep pushing on. It's gonna be hard. Her future is gonna be hard with her medical problems, but. I just wanted to do what was right by him. And um, we continued with the pregnancy. And um, later that summer, I was admitted to the Anschutz campus down in Denver. I was down at the hospital full time. On September 7th, 2022, she decided to act up on the monitors for the nurses. And they took me in, whisked me away for an emergency C-section. Um, I made the neonatologist and OB promise me that during that emergency C-section that they couldn't put me out because when Everly came out, I knew that her first breath might also be her last. And so I just wanted to see her, say my hello and goodbye. They got her out and they did a bedside resuscitation and got her intubated and all of the life-saving measures that we knew would have to happen to keep her alive. I delivered her at 28 weeks and five days. She was doing really well for 
that first 48 hours, and then the neonatologist, that's the baby doctors, um, he came into our room and said, I really need you at Everly's bedside. She's dying, her, and her lungs can't withstand life anymore. Um, she's exhausted. And I said, she just needs to go be with Jesus. <laughs> I knew my sweet baby girl got 48 hours of life, and that was probably all she was gonna be able to have. The good Lord stepped in at that point, and... He did, he, he saved her. She's an absolute miracle. They did a couple different things on the medical side, of course, but her little lungs started to improve and she hasn't really looked back since. She's 26 months old now. She is walking and talking. She's been cleared from cardiology and physical therapy and just is full of life now. She's got the personality. She's cantankerous and wants to cuddle all the time and gives her siblings a run for their money. And when did we name her? Um, when we found out my water broke at 18 weeks and five days, and I just knew we had to have some God-given beautiful name for this sweet, sweet girl. Everly is short for everlasting love, so the first part of everlasting love, and then amazing grace. And God was the one to decide whether or not she was going to live, um, if we would be coming home with a baby in our arms, if she would get to go be home with him in heaven. Um, ultimately, we just had to be faithful servants and acknowledge that God's timing is perfect and Christ intercedes on our behalf to give us these trials and tribulations throughout life to for us ourselves to really grow in and grow through um, and then to ultimately spread the word to others and like, look how good and faithful he was. Like, gosh, it's beautiful. And not everybody's story is gonna be like Everly's. Not everybody gets home to bring home that beautiful baby. She will forever be just an absolute miracle. And I don't know what she has planned for her future, what God has planned for her future, but it's something big. Everly's story became the most beautiful, beautiful testimony.